Hello and welcome to episode 21 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to be having a look at ARM Template Specs. So Template Specs are a new feature, they're actually currently still in preview, and they allow you to take your ARM templates and basically upload them into Azure and store them in Azure. Now why would you want to do this? Well, there are two real scenarios we're going to look at today. The first is using your templates to provide them to other people. So you want a way of distributing your templates so that somebody else can use these templates, can run them, um, and can create resources with them. So let's take a scenario where you're creating a set of uh, predefined ways to create resources in Azure. So you want the rest of your team just to use those. You don't want them going to create their own templates. You want them to use yours because you've got them set up a certain way and, and so on. The other scenario is where you've got templates you want to either distribute as a, a sort of module or you just want to be able to call nested templates. So if you recall in episode 10, we talked about nested templates where you can call one template from another. And for nested templates to work, you have to actually store those templates in a location that's accessible not only to you, but to the actual ARM fabric when it comes to deploy the resources. So you end up having to put them in GitHub or in a storage account or something like that and deal with how you upload those files and back them up and those sort of things. So template specs allows you to actually store those files in Azure and works out all the references for you so that you can call those nested templates directly from Azure. So no longer do you have to worry about um, actually managing that storage and dealing with that as well as handling versioning and those sort of things. So template specs is, is really quite a useful tool if you are looking to use nested templates um, out and possibly even build your own modules of templates that you want to be able to call from other templates. So we'll have a look at how that works and how you can use them. And hopefully you'll uh, you'll find that something you want to pick up. OK, so let's have a look at how we go about creating template specs. So what we've got here is we've got an ARM template. And this is nothing special. We haven't done anything to it currently to make it into a template spec. There really isn't anything you need to do to the ARM template for that. It's just a plain old ARM template. And this template is in, being used for a scenario where um, we're creating a module for creating a storage account. So we want our users to use this template to create storage accounts because it configures the storage account in a certain way that we, we want them configured. So we've got a parameter you can pass in, which is the name of the storage account you want to create. And that's the only thing the user gets to set. And then when we actually scroll down and look at the resources, see we're creating a storage account. Um, it's a premium storage account. So we're saying all storage accounts must be premium. Um, we're disabling public blob access and we're enforcing the minimum TLS version to be 1.2. Um, and that's what all of our storage accounts in our company should look like. And we want everyone to use this. So at the moment, we'd have to put this on a, on a file share or somewhere where all of our users could get hold of it and then run it. And they'd have to do it from the command line. All a bit painful. So instead, we're going to turn this into a template spec. And this will allow us to easily distribute this um, and call it from our other templates as well. OK, so when it comes to actually creating the template spec, you can do it a few ways. You can do it through the uh, CLI or PowerShell, and you can do it through the portal as well. So we'll look at using the portal now. We'll use the CLI later um, for an example. So inside the portal, you'll find a new uh, feature called template specs, which is where we are here. And you can come in, and we want to create a template spec. And so we'll define our um, actual a name for our story, a template spec. So we'll call it. Uh, standard storage account and we will define a resource group now this is a resource group where the template specs are going to be stored so you have to store them somewhere um, so we will call that I think we've already got one somewhere called template specs so we'll use that uh, oh, this is complaining because this needs to be a uh, A name with dashes in it so we'll just fix that up and we can put a description in here so we could say you know and then we need to give it a version so we'll say this is version 1.0 and this isn't the first one so we don't need any change notes and in here we can 
uh, apply the template. So we're going to take our template that we've got over here. And we're going to paste that in. And uh, you can actually upload the template for a different URL as well. So if you just want to upload the file, you can do that. But we'll we'll just paste it straight in here. We can give it some tags if you want some metadata. We're not going to do that. And we'll go ahead and we will create that template spec. Okay, so that's available here now. And if we click on that, we can see it defines our details. We can actually look at the template. You can see that this is the template that we created. And as an end user now, I can come in here and I can go to deploy. So let's say I want to deploy this storage account. I can actually use the spec directly from the portal. I don't need to actually write an ARM template or anything. I can come in here. I can pick a storage resource group that I want to deploy to. I can fill in any parameters that I need. So this is the only parameter that we're going to go. We're going to need here. So call it that. And then we can go and create. You could do this. This basically is a marketplace offering now. So you will get the marketplace page and whatever here. Um, but then we can click create, and that will go off, and that will actually create the storage account for us using the template that we defined. So that's now finished. So if we go have a look in that resource group, you can see we've actually got it's a previous one we've created. So there, here's the new one we created. And if we have a look, you can see that it should be configured for TLS 1.2, which it is. And public blog access is disabled. So that's kind of fulfilling the, the first use of template specs that allows us to upload our files, have them stored in a central location and have people actually be able to come in and consume them through the portal um, if you want. So people who are not familiar with writing ARM templates just want to go and deploy a resource. Um, you can have them go and use this template spec directly in the portal. OK, so the second scenario we've got is that actually we want to consume these template specs from inside our ARM template. So these modules are effectively something we want to use as a nested template to be able to call from another template that we're building that maybe builds other things at the same time as creating a storage account. And so what we need to do here is the same thing we did with actual nested templates back in episode 10. Uh, we used the Microsoft.resources forward slash deployments resource to uh, point it to our nested templates. All the other settings are the same, you know, name, the, the deployment mode, those sort of things. But the, where it's different is we've got this template link section. And in here is an ID field. So this allows us to point at the actual template spec. So instead of having to reference an actual file by URL or anything like that, we're referencing an Azure resource because that's, that's what it is. The template spec is a resource in Azure. It's got an ID. And so we can use that. So we just use the resource ID function to populate this ID with the actual Azure ID of our our template spec. So we're passing in the resource group name, the type of resource, which is this template specs version. So we're actually targeting a specific version of the template spec at this point, the name of the actual template spec and the version we want to use. That's all we need. Now, if you were trying to use template specs across subscription, um, then you can do that. But you do you have to pass in the subscription ID into this resource ID as well. Then as with any other nested template, we're going to pass in any parameters that are required. Um, this is just the storage account name for this template, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So we can now use that to actually deploy that template um, using uh, the usual method we do to deploy, so PowerShell, CLI, um, whatever. There's nothing special you need to do there as far as that's concerned. That's just a completely normal deployment. So to make things a little bit more complicated, template specs also support the use of nested templates within them. So let's say you've got a scenario where you want to create a more complicated module that you have a, a top level template and then it calls out to various lower level templates, but you want to bundle all that within the same template spec. You can do that through the use of nested templates inside your template spec. So we've got an example here where we're creating a storage account and an IP address. The storage account we actually want to call from a sub module um, that's stored in a folder beneath the main module. Um, so you can see on the left here, we've got an artifacts folder with the storage module in it, so it's the storage module.json. Um, and then we've got our top level template, which is this deploy nested template. So inside here, we've got our resources. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call the nested template, again, using the Microsoft.resources slash deployments, as you would with any nested template. 
But the difference here is in the template link section, we have this relative path option. And this then points to where that JSON file is relative to the top level file. So you can see it's just in artifacts forward slash storage module dot JSON. Uh, and that will pick up that local file. Everything else is the same, passing in any parameters and so on is as normal. It's just this relative path that's different. And then beneath that, we've got our public IP address, which is just a normal Azure resource that we want to create. Okay, so this time, instead of using the portal to upload, we're gonna use the PowerShell commandlets. You could still use the portal if you wanted to, but just to show the different methods, we're gonna look at this. So we're using the new AZ template spec command, uh, passing in the resource group for the where to store this, a name, a version, same as before, display name, um, the location of, to store the uh, template, and then the actual JSON file there. So we'll run that. And that's uploaded the uh, the template. And it gives you a summary of that, including the resource ID if you want to start using that. Um, but let's go have a quick look at that in the portal. So back over in the portal, you can see we've now got our IP and storage template spec here. And if we click on that, the main difference we'll see is if we scroll down, we've got our main template still, but we've also then got some artifacts which are in this relative path and we've got our storage module.json file as well. Um, so when we use this template spec, it will call, be able to call whatever sub-templates it needs. I don't have to worry about placing those sub-templates somewhere accessible or anything. They're already bundled up in the uh, template spec. Now, just a word of warning, this, as I said, it bundles those files within the template spec. So if this these artifacts are exclusively used by this IP storage template spec, then that's fine. But where you want to start getting a sort of reuse out of your templates, um, you want to try and avoid bundling sub-templates that are going to be used by multiple different template specs. Um, because if that's the case, then you're going to end up having to re-upload those whenever you change them to each different template spec and manage all those dependencies and so on, which is going to be a bit of a pain. So as an alternative to that, you can also have template specs call other template specs. So here we've got pretty much the same template as we used to create the previous template spec. So it's just the storage account and the IP address again. Um, but instead of nesting that um, storage uh, module piece underneath this uh, template in the artifacts folder, we don't want to do that. So this is the storage module we created previously. We want this to be accessible to lots of people. We want you know, it to be used either on its own or as part of a module. We don't want to have to update it in multiple different places. So instead of having that relative path in here in this uh, storage account section, we're instead going to point to the actual template spec that we uploaded earlier in the video. Um, so this is the same as before, you're just passing in the ID. I've hard coded it here just to give you another example. You could again use the resource ID function to get those details, but that's just pointing to the subscription, the resource group, and the actual template version you want to use within your file. Um, so now this is referencing the actual template spec. So if I needed a new version of my storage account module, a version 1.1, then I could go and fix that in my template set spec separately, make all the changes, create a version 1.1 in there and upload that. This would still use version 1.0 until I went in and updated it to version 1.1, um, but I'm only having to change that template spec in one place. I'm not having to go in and, and, and amend it in all the places I bundled it in with the, the top level file. Um, so yeah, if you're going to do that, you need to weigh off, you know, is this something that's a one-off that's only going to be used for this particular template spec, in which case absolutely bundle it together, that makes sense. Is it something that I'm going to want to reuse over multiple different templates and should I make it into its own template spec, which I can then call from this template spec um, and make it much more reusable. And that's how template specs work. Hopefully that was useful um, and hopefully there's something you can sort of make use of in your projects and start um, removing some of those complexities around having to use storage accounts or Git repos and those sort of things. Any questions as always, drop them in the uh, questions in YouTube and I'll be happy to pick those up. Uh, next week, we're gonna start looking at um, a new feature or a new language really for ARM templates, um, which you might have heard of, which is called Project Bicep. We're gonna have a look at how that works and how you can write your ARM templates in a different, possibly better language and uh, yeah, we'll get started with that next week. We'll be going over a few episodes with that because it's quite a complicated subject. So we'll look forward to that. And hopefully I'll see you then. Until then, have a great rest of your day.